Hi guys and welcome to another kit review. Alright, so today we're having a look at a, a very classic um, kit from Tamiya in 135 scale. It is Tamiya's German Hanimag STKFZ2511. Okay, so this particular kit came out in 1988. Kit number is 35020. It is a Rebox with basically just a change box of the original Tamiya kit which came out in 1973 and yes this is another kit that I built back in the 70s um, I don't think I've got this one lying around anywhere so um, yeah we'll see if anything's changed I doubt very much whether it has this is one of Tamiya's ongoing reissues it's constantly available. They haven't really upgraded the moulds or anything for this particular one. Although they do have some later model um, SDKFZ 251s. Which is slightly different back. Upgraded features etc. But this is, as I said, the classic Tamiya one. Alright, so let's have a look. Alright, you get five figures with this kit, Panamag, usual classic artwork of the vehicle and figures on a white background, right? So, it does say military miniatures series number 20, and I think they're up to series number 30 something right, right now. Okay, so it does say fully detailed plastic track, we will have a look. Alright, so that's the front of the box, on the side as usual. In Japanese this is a brief history of the vehicle I can see 2511 here and here so it is a history of the vehicle okay on the other side standard advertising for more classic Tamiya kits Tiger 1, Tiger 2, M4A3 Sherman and a T3485 okay so that's the box Let's have a look inside. Now I did pick this kit up probably, I think it was last year, right? So um, it was cheap, 20 something bucks Australian. So let's have a look. Classic Tamiya, full Japanese instructions. Because this is an ongoing reissue, they have thrown in their normal new tech tips about assembly, removing the excess, drilling holes etc okay English instructions of course and let's have a look standard old school bottom of the hull one bag with the top of the hull and side skirts etc one bag with the wheels and decals inside okay yep and fittings two vinyl tracks and one bag with the figures in slightly gr different green color all right and that's all you get in the, in the bag that's all that's in the box okay so I'll get rid of this and in a second as usual we'll have a look at the instructions and the decals okay so let's have a look what have we got all right so Again, original classic style Tamiya gives you a history of the half tracks, what they were used for, why they were developed, the different types. If the KFZ 11s, 25118 Type A, and a 2511 Type D. I do believe Tamiya current issue, the newer half track, is a Type D with the more angled back on it okay so always good to have a history of the vehicle always good to give it a read all right knowledge is very good thing to have you never know when it's going to come in handy or even to start a conversation with someone in a tank museum okay so that's classic Tamiya on the inside we have got the sprues 
as you can see there is literally just four sprues and the top and bottom body shells that's it description of the parts please read before commencing usual warnings you require tweezers etc etc fairly straight standard straightforward okay so let's have a look see so we start off with the interior okay this is just a driver's compartment it does have a actual photos of the 251 driver's compartment crew member in the front also the wheels front wheels okay then we get to the rest of the compartment right just the seats that go in so this is a water tank not all 251s had that water tank so um, internet references as to how you want to model it with or without the water tank then we just got the torsion bars going in this plate here holds the torsion bars in place okay so it literally means these axles will actually move okay same on both sides then the floor pan goes in right fairly straightforward this is definitely an easy weekender kit all right as you can see this is your front wheels so you've got an outer an inner and the center hub section which you do not glue so the wheels will go around this is your front axle and steering all right and yes this does steer you can turn the wheels if you're careful not to glue putting in the axle parts okay then your drive sprocket either wheels road wheels etc go on it does show a sequence so that's an easy sequence it shows you a top-down view as how the wheels sit then your rear doors okay and the rear doors do open okay that's easy enough they are designed if you do not glue them you will have opening doors machine gun mount then the top body goes on the bottom doors go in so if you're careful those doors will operate then the front of the vehicle goes on so this is a fairly simple straightforward build not hard at all then you just have your mud guards going on your side equipment boxes and tools that looks to be like a front headlight to me same again on the other side equipment boxes tools on the mud guard they get connected and then just a case of mounting the machine guns your vision slits which unfortunately you cannot have open because there's nothing behind they're just basically designed to glue in place no tech light and literally 14 steps and she's done you can always tell it's a classic style instructions because it gives you photos of the actual vehicle itself that this one was modeled on okay Tamiya has a long history of dealing with the tank museum and Bovington camp in England I believe they even have their own section that it has been funded by Tamiya okay so a lot of their models and things are based on what comes out of the tank museum which is I think fantastic thing okay and next page comes to the assembly of your figures okay painting your figures you'll notice that it doesn't refer to Tamiya colors all right it just refers to the actual color itself all right when this kit first came out Tamiya did not have its own color range and therefore they just said paint this feel gray flat brown etc etc a little bit of advertising for another three classic Tamiya kits photo of the actual model and then here we have painting and applying okay African front all over dark yellow Russian front all over dark gray okay from 1943 all vehicles were painted in dark yellow so yes you can paint this in dark yellow green stripes doesn't have to be an Africa core one all right does have divisional marks for 
14th, 16th and 24th Panzer Division, Gross Deutschland, 15th Panzer Division, Africa Corps and also Tactical Marks. As you can see, Tactical Marks are necessary for all soft skin and heart track vehicles. Not necessarily for tanks, but definitely for all the other vehicles because that tells you where this vehicle belongs in the company, battalion, regiment, division. Okay, number of plates, etc. And that's it. Fairly simple, straightforward painting. Call outs throughout, so you shouldn't have a problem building this particular vehicle. And on the back, more history. So you've literally got front and back pages are the history of the vehicle, plus the different types. Tamiya does. I think make a 2519 kit as well and you do get oh this one as well I think Tampia calls it the Stuka right but other manufacturers do make the command vehicles etc this is always a handy thing to keep this is your company organization as of 1942 how many vehicles in each section platoon motorcycles etc right very very handy thing plus all the different variants and what they were used for motor carrier sound recording survey vehicle telephone all the different types okay so that's the instructions let's have a look at the decals fairly comprehensive decals okay as it says, it does have divisional and tactical markings, Africa Corps and Europe, plus of course your crosses, individual numbering, so you can make this vehicle any number you wish, plus number plates, same again for the small, so yes, okay, multi numbers, any vehicle number you want, okay. So that's good. That's always a good choice and does come in handy if you need these for another kit as well. All right, so I'll give you a still of those. And in a second, we will have a look at the sprues. Okay, so let's have a look at the sprues. And first we'll start off with the body shell. Okay, does have some basic bolt detail on it. Nothing on the bottom that's plain. There is a quite substantial molding point here which will need to be shaved down. Not really any engine. Okay, there is no engine detail on this. So it is a fairly basic old kit. All right. Inside, this is where your torsion bars, axles go. Okay, and then you get a plate that goes over there to hold them in, in, in place. Let's have a look here. See if I can get that close enough for you. There you go. There's the kit number, 35020, copyright 1973. Okay, so this is, as I said, 1973 kit, reissued in 1988. And currently still ongoing. Ongoing. Let's have a look at the top. Oh, come on, focus. There we go. Come on, that's it. So, some really nice bolt detail on the surface. Really nice. Okay. Bit of a wash on that we'll pick those out quite well all right there is going to be a needed a little bit of cleanup around the front edges there's a little bit of i won't call it flash but just one focus for me mm, she doesn't want to focus just a little bit of ridge line there you go a little bit of ridge line along there Okay, and that's where it was molded, so that will need to be cleaned up, but apart from that, that's not too bad. No interior details there. 
okay that will need to be dressed up I think with um, various supplies and things if you want this to look really nice inside okay so that's your top Next, we'll have a look at this one, which is just your mudguards, front seating, machine guns, tools, etc. So let's have a look at the mudguards. It's fairly plain, not much detail. Okay, there is bolt detail on the front and some basic hinge detail on the side toolboxes. Tools are probably a bit heavy in the handles, so maybe shave those down a bit or find some tools out of your spares box. Let's have a look at the machine guns. Okay, so even though this is an old kit, 73, those machine guns are still quite good. They will come out quite nicely, painted up with a bit of wash on them. There is a bit of flash around the headlights and on the mold marks, mold lines I should say, for the tools etc. So it is starting to show its age. Okay, so there's not really a texture on the seats. So that will have to be painted on, a bit of variation. So it is showing its age, as in a little bit of um, excess flash around the mould lines, but it's not too bad for an old kit. She still holds up okay so next we'll have a look at so this is your interior okay driver's compartment seats and these are your axles etc okay so seats are not too bad nice tread pattern on the inside steering wheel that is your water tank which is yes or no you could get away with leaving it out depending on which mark you want that's your suspension okay leaf spring, sus sus leaf spring suspension for the front axles are fairly plain they are designed to operate so careful with the glue clean up the mold lines and you should be fine that is your front steering it looks heavy and it is but you gotta remember this is an old kit and it was designed to have the wheels go around and steering so at least you can pose the front wheels unlike a lot of other models where the wheels are fixed straight ahead okay and The last vehicle sprue is, naturally enough, the wheels. Drive sprockets. Not a great deal of detail on a drive sprocket. Road wheels and idler wheels, same. Okay, a little bit of bolt detail, but the bolt detail is not um, sharp and crisp. It's there, but they're not six-sided bolts. They're just basically round bolts. But considering the age of the kit and the fact that you won't even notice it, once it's painted up, it should be fine. Let's have a look at the tires. So there is a quite substantial line where these two halves have been molded together. That will need to be cleaned up. But once it's cleaned up, uh, it shouldn't be too bad. Okay, so as I said, this is an old kit, so you can't expect miracles from it. From it. 
So what else have I got to show you? The tracks. Okay, simple basic vinyl tracks. We've all seen these before. Okay, standard Tamiya ones. They are quite flexible because, as I said, even though this kit was reissued in 1988, this is an ongoing issue by Tamiya. Alright, and the last thing I've got to show you for this particular kit is the figures. Five figures, you do get bases, which is another unusual classic Tamiya. Okay, plus weapons and accessories. So let's have a close up. First, let's have a look at this. So I can get that close. There you go, 1973. That's when this figure sprue was last updated. Okay, so the detail on the rifles, okay, as you can see, is there's a bit of flash. You can't see through where the trigger is, so you'd want to fix that. So maybe replace the rifles with uh, something from your spares box. There's plenty of stores, I mean spares, not stores. So you've got your gas mask containers, your bayonets, binoculars. Okay, your MG34. So let's have a look at the figures. So these are old figures. So... The detail is, I'm going to say it's classic Tamiya, alright? It's still sharp. The faces will still pick out quite well with a nice bit of painting. Okay, so there is a fair number of moulding pips, etc. on the figures, which and some mould line, which will need to be cleaned up. But overall, the faces, I would say the faces are acceptable. They will paint up, and they are, considering the age, quite reasonable. Okay, and that is literally the last sprue. So there isn't a great deal to this. The whole kit, the hand mag itself is three sprues plus the top and bottom and then you've got your figure. So four sprues plus a top and bottom body shell and that's your entire kit. Okay, so that's it guys. That is Tamiya's German hand mag from 1988. It is an ongoing issue. Originally issued in the early 1970s as we can see by the copyright but still going strong still available and still cheap great little weekend kit great kit for anyone any skill level to put together over a weekend alrighty so that brings us to the end of another one hope you got something from this one and as usual until next time take it easy and I'll see you later